Welcome to the Mind of Basketball podcast, soon to be playoff edition. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast. We recap, break down, analyze players and teams in the play-in and playoffs from the previous games from the previous few days. Ja, it is just about that time of the year. The best time of the year. The most exciting time of the year. Uh, not Christmas, but Something so magical, close to that, you know. And it's it's playoff basketball. This is, I love playoff basketball. The, the games, the best seven series, the role players stepping up, the different strategies implemented by coaching, the chess matches, the, the star players coming out to play, the upsets, the choke jobs. I love it. I love it. I love every single bit of it. I I am so excited. I can't wait. What about you, John? Um, yeah, it's finally here. I'm happy. I'm prepared to see who, who are the real ones, who are the fake ones, who will like, you know, overcome adversity, who will whose pressures, who 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 can't handle the pressure where pressure burps pipes, you know. They're just, you know, it's just like, you know. I'm happy. I'm I'm happy to see it. When pressure bursts pipes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Uh, no, it's cool. But yes, playoff basketball is just around the corner, literally like six days away, uh, but or five days away. But before we get to that, we have to get into these playing games. These playing games will determine the eighth and the seventh seed of the Eastern and Western Conference even though most of them will lose, but we'll see what happens. Any, anything that happens, it's the playoffs. Yeah. So uh, which conference do you want to start with off with first, John? Playoff, uh, playing prediction. Eastern. The Eastern Conference. All right, cool. So let's go to that seventh and eighth seeded matchup between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, Cleveland, this is not for you. <laughs> Uh, I Cleveland is a really good team. They played really well. They shocked everybody. They really came out of nowhere. Nobody expected them to be in this position, especially with Colin Sexton going down. You know, but credit, they had two all-stars and Darius Garland, who stepped up big time for them. They had Jared Allen, who also stepped up big time in Brooklyn. Yeah, you, look, now you're facing them. You know? <laughs> and they got rookie sensation, a possible rookie of the year, Evan Mobley. Kevin Love made his resurgence. Like this team is really good and they're deep. Unfortunately, late in the in the season, they dropped because they was in the playoffs for majority of the season and then they dropped. Some has to do with injuries, or some of they was just losing some important games. They're really, really starting from that Bulls loss that they took. And it kind of just went down and now they went from what the the, the uh, fifth seed and now they're the eighth seed yeah, yeah. so it's, it's not it wasn't really too good for them and now they have the unfortunate task of trying to guard kd and kyrie irving <sighs> yeah cleveland like i said you're a good team they're a deep team you know but they're young and did I mention that they have to guard Kevin Durant and Kyrie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you can mention it again just to remind them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. the good thing about it is, before I let you go, the good thing about it is this is one game. You just need to win one game. You just need to get lucky one game. You just need to play your best basketball for this one game. And then you get in. Yeah. So it's not a series. Exactly. You don't have to be the complete better team compared to Brooklyn. You just have to be better that night. Yeah, look at Cleveland. Cleveland is a really good team. They're really young and they and they have a bright future ahead of them in store. You know what I mean? Especially if they keep their core and get healthy. Again, just like what you said, um, not having Colin Sexton, um, Colin Sexton, it's like you know, it's not a crazy drop, but but like you they know, they forgot about him. Yeah, they forgot all about him. You know what I mean? But like you know, but. The, but the fact that they have come around and surprised everyone is obviously something big, something special. 
and it shows you the progression that Cleveland's going in, not being in the LeBron James era anymore. But, yeah, it's surprising, huh? I know, right? But but yeah. Brooklyn, <laughs> KD Kyrie. It, it, like, let's be honest though. Like, let's be honest. Brooklyn shouldn't have been in this situation. It just things did not go in their way in the beginning. So, like, you know, they find themselves in this situation. Cause trust and believe, I said it plenty of times before, and I'll say it again. If the things that went their way finally towards the end of the season when it happened, like after the all-star break, at least, this team would not be in a playing situation. Let's be honest. The Brooklyn is not a playing team. You know what I mean? And again, with the special talents of KD and Kyrie, you most definitely know for a fact they could, them two by themselves could carry this team far into the regular season. And they actually did it before and with, with the fact that KD legit by himself, well, he had Harden, but Harden was struggling before he left. But like, you know, was the number one seed. So, so like, you know, they, Brooklyn should never been in this situation. It's just that things just out of their control didn't go in their way. So now, they end up in the playing, and now Cleveland is just. But just like what you said, it's just one game. It's just one game, but good. But yeah, good luck, Cleveland. So I think we can say in unison, or we can agree that we both have the Brooklyn Nets winning this playing matchup. Yeah, ninety-five percent. Yes, we have the Brooklyn Nets winning this playoff matchup. Getting the seventh seed will continue on later on with the full playoff predictions after we get into the playing. Uh, but staying in the Eastern Conference, the ninth and the tenth seed, Charlotte Hornets and the Atlanta Hawks. An interesting battle between these two young teams. Uh, the Hornets back in the play-in again. Uh, now a little more experience, got a little more, got a little better. Uh, Mellow Ball has been playing better. Miles Bridges has been playing better. And I said early in, this, in the year, this team was my surprise. It's going come a shock to some people. Or, maybe, or you could say I'm just biased against Trey Young. Maybe it's a little bit of both. But <laughs> I do have the Hornets beating this Hawks team. I say it could be a toss-up. It could be a toss-up. Well, again, any these playing games could be toss-ups, right? But, like, you know, but, you know, you know the more talented team and stuff like that. But this one is, like, legit, like, it's actually balanced. It actually balanced the way that these two teams go, so it could legit be a 50-50 toss-up. Yeah. Uh, again, you you gave it. You gave it. You said it great about the Hornets team again. Lamelo Ball, their 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 franchise, a first time All Star. Miles Bridges has played better. You talk about the um the addition of Montrez Harrell, Terry Rozier still on the team. Like like this team this team is really good and could and. They could go somewhere. They could go somewhere for sure. And again, they're another team that has a bright future. The Hawk, the difference between that and the Hawks, I feel like the Hawks, they're battle tested. They're they're um they're battle tested. They're experienced. They're hungry because of yep. last year. And I know you don't want me to bring up last year, but let's be honest, that experience goes a long way. Meanwhile, last year in the in the play in when the Hornets were fighting for it, they kind of got dusted badly. <laughs> so, but you know, things change. Within within the season, so yeah. so I it's a toss up, but with this one, I I, I say I, I got the Hawks though, just off yeah. their experience in trade. They're, they're the favorites, and you know, deservingly so. I just I I, don't, I feel like the Hornets. This is more of a it's a hot take, kind of you know, it's a shocker, it's an upset, but I do think this Hornets team they have the energy. They have the passion, they have the hustle, they have some of the talent. Of course, they don't have as much talent as the Hawks do. They have some of that talent, and I think they can steal this one game and eliminate yeah. the Hawks. And boy, would I love to see it. Well, yeah, and, and the Hawks also, they should be disappointed a little bit a little bit in themselves because they slipped from last year. They yeah. slipped miraculously from last year. So you know what I mean? They have all right to be disappointed, but this should be motivation for them to get better. But again, just like what you said, the Hornets have more energy. They play with a more of a flow, a running gun kind of style of game. Don't get me wrong, the Hawks do the same, but it's more up tempo because of Lamelo Ball running the show and how his play style is. Yep, and I think he's going to be an X factor. My son Miles Bridges going to do his thing. Hornets, I believe yeah. in y'all. I still believe in y'all. Don't let me down. 
do not let me down. Please do not let me down. Okay. So I guess we could do this quickly since we uh, both predicted differently. We both have the Nets uh, beating the Cavs, but you picked the Hawks to beat the Hornets. So in that third and final game, who do you have between the Hornets? I mean, the Hornets, the Hawks and the Cavs. The Hawks and the Cavs. I got the, uh, I feel like actually with that one, I feel like the Cavs could beat the Hawks. I'm going to choose the Cavs with that one. Okay. As for me, with the Hornets and the Cavs, I got the Hornets. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got the Hornets stealing a playoff spot from the Hawks and from the Cavs. And I haven't, I haven't gone to the playoffs. I haven't gone to the playoffs. Surprise. Can't hate on that one. I can't hate so, on that come one. Come on, Hornets. Please. I believe in y'all. Please, please. Don't let me down. Do not let me down. But all right. Let's go to the Western Conference. The Let's start with the ninth and the 10th seed battle first. The New Orleans Pelicans up against the San Antonio Spurs. An interesting matchup considering these two teams are eh, being honest. But they have some yeah. players that can take them over. Uh, specifically for San Antonio, they have the all-star DeJounte Murphy, who's been playing exceptional the entire season. I mean, damn the average in a triple double. He's been fantastic. He's been their leader. He's been their guy. And for the Horn for the Hornets, for the Pelicans, used to be Hornets. The Pelicans, their mid-season trade came up big as they required CJ McCollum. And he's really picked up the pace for this team and has really helped them get to this playing matchup, get to that ninth seed and fight for a playoff opportunity. So, Ja, I'll go to you first. Who do you have? I got the Pelicans, and and there's no disrespect to the Spurs, but again, it's more about the talent on both sides and just the way that it is. Um, look, Dejounte Murray is great. Keldon mm-hmm. Johnson is really nice talent. Lonnie Walker is good. I'm um, cool, but and Trey Jones and stuff like that. San Antonio has a really good roster, a really good roster, but it's going to have to rely on Greg Popovich and his legendary coaching abilities to let this team play free in order for them to potentially win this game. New Orleans, their offensive, their offensive belief, their offense, believe it or not, is high powered. The only thing is that they're missing is Zion and he's never coming back. That's why I was going to say. So, you know what I mean? They're going to have to be highly dependent on CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram, but the way that they flow offensively is really good in their favor. And I feel like, the talent wise, especially on the offensive end, will swing their way. And I got the Pelicans winning that 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 game. I have to agree with you. I think the Pelicans are just a better overall team compared to the Spurs. I mean, the Spurs got that push late into the season to get into this kind of playing uh, situation. But the Pelicans, I mean, the Pelicans kind of started from midway to the season to make that push. But yeah, this team is just better overall compared to the Spurs. I know Greg Popovich can never count on Greg Popovich. You know, that's my guy. But I do think that the Pelicans will take this win. Yeah. Now, as for the seventh and the eighth seed, the eighth seeded Los Angeles Clippers going up against the seventh seeded, your guys in Minnesota, the Minnesota Timberwolves. For me, this is. I this is not hard. I mean, I don't want to say not hard because now Paul George is back. Now Clippers are rolling. Now, yeah. you know, they're playing well. They're playing free. They're doing their thing. But I do think the Timberwolves, this is their chance to get into the playoffs. This is their best opportunity. So I have the Timberwolves being this Clippers team. I think they're more well structured. I think they have better chemistry. Well, yeah, they just played better. They played basically all of them together throughout the entire season. Yeah. You know, of course, yeah. the Clippers have great chemistry because, I mean, they've been together for a little bit. But Paul George being out and them kind of having to do carry the load without him, The what I'm fearful is that now he's back and he's got to a rhythm. Yeah. And now the chemistry might be back just how it was. But I'm hoping... Yeah. Well, not hoping. It's not like I 
want Timberwolves or whatever. <laughs> but I'm thinking that the Timberwolves chemistry and their flow and how they've been playing all year is going to propel them to beat this Clippers team in this uh, playing matchup and get the seventh seed. Yeah, look at this. Is this you already know who I got with this one because you already know the matchup I want to see if they if they end up winning and making it into the playoffs. Either you know way, you still you still would have got the tools. Yeah, Those yeah, I was, guys. yeah. Regardless, and here's my thing: I say for a fact that they're going to win this. That they, I got them winning this game off of these off of this. All three stars show up to play: Cat, D'Lo, Edwards. If one of them even messes up, I'm going to, throughout the game, my flow of energy will change so badly. It will change so badly because those three are really crucial to how this, to how the team flows, to how the team goes. Like, you know how, you know, usually one player basically car- um, carries the whole team and the team rides the wave? These three players got to be together in order for the whole team to go. Again, their offensive, their offense is 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 fast paced, is quick, is high powered. They love to run up and down, get because that's the way that their play style should be, especially ever since they got rid of Andrew Wiggins. So, like you know, this is their opportunity, this is their chance, and especially if they can stay disciplined on defense. With the Clippers, on the other hand, is the thing is the fact that they was able to okay, they slipped because Paul George went out, but they did not slip majorly. And they still played within the system because of the fact that Ty Lu is a really good coach and he knows how to put some kind of structure around them in order for them to like, you know, get through. So it's just like, you know what I yep. mean? Mm. But I, again, with Tim Wu's having more talent, the only way I could see the Clippers winning, to be honest, is if things go right for them and if Paul George goes off. I really feel like that's the only way the Clippers could beat the Timberwolves. If Paul George goes crazy as if, like, you know, he's carrying this team by himself like he did last year in the playoffs when Kawhi went out. Yeah, I I, I can see that. But either way, if the big three of the Timberwolves are doing their thing, I got the also, also oh. Pat Bev know the Clippers well, so, you know. <laughs> who, who, who knows what's going to happen? But yeah, Tim Wolves. I got Tim Wolves taking that seventh seed, and for the final eighth spot, the Pelicans and the Clippers. I think we both are in agreement. Who we have there? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Of course, we're going with the Pelicans. Yeah, you got the Pelicans. Yeah, Pelicans. You got the Pelicans being the Clippers. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, could, I think it broke up a little bit. I, could, I didn't know that you said something, but um, ding. Oh, Pelicans versus Clippers in the, for the eighth seed. Um, yes. Oh, Clippers. Clippers. Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I said, I thought it was in agreement, and then you said Pels. Huh? Nah, yeah, I, I'm sorry. It, it broke up a little bit. My bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, connection is starting already. Great time. All right. Yeah, we both have the Clippers taking the eighth seed, meaning that they will – well, we'll get to that. But all right. <laughs> now, since we have our playing predictions and our playing scenarios out the way, let's get into the meat of it all. Let's get into our playoff tree, our playoff predictions. Which conference, once again, Ja, do you want to start off with? Western. Western Conference. All right. Let's go from the Let's start with the second and the seventh seed. Let's start off with that. Okay. The second seed, Memphis Grizzlies, those degenerates down in Memphis. Those damn degenerates playing so well, playing so free without their star player. It's just so crazy. Battling up against the Minnesota Timberwolves, a surprise to everyone but you. Yeah. And this should be a fun first round matchup. I'm expecting a battle. I'm expecting most of the games to be close, mm-hmm. in my opinion, because I really do think the Timberwolves can kind of match up well with the Grizzlies. And a yeah. lineup can match up pretty well with them. Uh their their um regular season matchups were always fun. We saw when I mean, we was talking on the phone and watching one of them. Yep. And it's so it's so crazy. It was so fun. But I know these are your guys. 
I know how yeah. badly you want your guys to do well, but listen, this Memphis team, who we all thought they, we all knew that they was good, but we didn't know how. They didn't. We didn't know that they were this good. Yeah. And so they for me, out. this is the Grizzlies. I got the Grizzlies taking this series in five. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I didn't expect the Grizzlies to make this extreme of a jump. I expected them to prove on where they were last season from being the eighth seed after fighting in the play-in. Mm-hmm. And it's been a long time coming from Minnesota after all their ups and downs with the from ever since 2018 with the Jimmy Butler situation. And but this is what one thing I want to say. Cat has only been in the playoffs once, and we saw how mightily he struggled in his first ever playoff series. He is the best player now because you kind of made a decision in the way in 2018 where he wasn't the best player because Jimmy Butler was obviously on the team. Yeah. But now you're, the, now you're the best player on the team. Oh, yeah, behind Anthony Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, you're the best player. Keep going. Okay, turn on. But, but, yeah. But, wait, but you're the best player. You're the – well, D, D-Lo's their leader. D, D-Lo's their spoken leader, but they, they, they follow your presence. You have to go off. No matter how the series ends – you have to have a great series. You have to really have a great series in order to keep up the confidence of your team, along with the fact that Edwards is always going to be confident because that's just his mentality. So, but yet Memphis has showed out and they have proven that no matter what, they're battle tested and they're ready for anything. Memphis in six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also this Memphis team, they're young, but they have some experience under their belt. If you remember two years ago, they had, in, in terms of big games and big pressure situations, two years ago, they had that battle in the first play-in against the, the Portland Trailblazers. Then last yeah. year, they fought their way to the playoffs, beating the Spurs, and then shocking Golden State, getting that eighth seed, and um, getting a win against the Jazz in game yeah. one. Yeah. From, yeah, they won game one, right? Yes, they did win game one. Yeah, so uh, they have some experience in these big situations. They have some experience. So I'm hoping that they can do vibes in this series. But I do expect a fun and entertaining series. For me, like I said, five games. But every game, to me, will be close. Yes. All right. So let's go to the fourth and fifth seed matchup. The Dallas Mavericks. Going up against the Utah Jazz. Uh, since I already know your answer, I, I'll start this off. Uh, I got, I got, I got the Mavericks winning, winning in. I, in my opinion, I feel like it's going to go to 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 seven games. But I got the, I got the Mavericks winning in seven. You think it's going to go to seven? Yeah, no, nah, I'm sorry. Yo, Jazz, this it. This yeah, this is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Window is closing. Quinn Snyder, this is it. This is your last season with Utah. See you. Bye bye. Hey, you a good coach. You'll be on another team, but that's it for you. Goodbye. Uh, you might, you might have to trade some players around. Get, you know, do a little bit of scheming and all this. Blah blah blah. But listen, Utah, I have no faith in y'all. Y'all blown lead after lead after lead after lead. I mean, Paul George came back, yeah. and he was yeah, he was in he was in playoff form from last year because y'all just did the same thing. I was up by twenty. Against the Clippers, they came back. Hold on, not finished. Yeah. Then they lose another game after that. Who they blew a lead to? Who they blew a lead to? Oh, in that oh same Golden season. State. Oh, yeah. Okay. When Curry, okay. was, Curry, Curry was pouting like Gobert, mocking him. No respect for you. No respect for you, Gobert. But the league don't really respect you. But for the Jazz, no respect for y'all at all. Nobody respects y'all. Nobody. And what reason have y'all to, to – what reason have y'all to give, like – Y'all have not get, got to a conference finals. Y'all blew a 3-1 lead. Y'all were up 2-0 against the Clippers last year. And this year, like I said, towards the end of the season, y'all to blow three leads, including the one against the Suns re- most recently. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, Utah. That's it. Y'all losing this series. Luca, you're finally going to get your playoff series win. I got the Mavs in six. Yeah. But here's why I say it could go to seven. Because again, just like with all the factors you talk about with Utah, um, their defense is kind of 
been exposed a little bit. I don't want to use that word exposed because it's like you know that like no, that's been exposed. Twin Snyder doesn't know what to what to do, or the players don't know how to rotate. Or if you want to yeah. just take Rudy Gobert out the game, you got to take him out the game. Yeah, but but let's be honest here. I was like, look at the Mavs. They did great in terms of um during midseason trades with getting Spencer Dinwiddie because they still great have a really, yeah great pickup because he helped them exponentially towards the end of the season in terms of getting a crucial important wins against teams that I, I thought would beat them. Mm-hmm. But again, we already know Luca's going to go crazy. But I I feel like with this series is like you know it's just going to be like Luca by himself. Like again, the Mavericks got a good team. But it's going to be mostly Luca, just like how Luca nearly did it by himself last year. You know what I mean against the Clippers, even though they lost, he legit nearly beat the Clippers single handedly. And I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be like that with this series. It's just that again with the way that Utah is and the fact that um Mavs like to play like a little bit of a small ball kind of thing. It's gonna go in their favor in seven games. We'll see. We'll see. Dallas, do not let me down. I swear, do not let me down. Do not let me down. Come on, Luca. Show, show me that you that you next Dirk. You modern Dirk. <laughs> All right. Now we can go to the first seed and the A seed matchup. Now I just wanted to. We just talked about it, so I want to give it a little bit of a break. The Phoenix Suns going up against, if our playing predictions are correct. The Los Angeles Clippers. Now, you, you any said team. Sentence. You said the death sentence for which one? For which one? Since you said it was, it could go, go either way. Which death I, sentence? I was, I, I was chatting. Dude. Death <laughs> but if there's any team out of those four between Timberwolves, Pelicans, Spurs, and Clippers, the best team to go up against the Suns, the best comp for them is the Clippers. Yeah. So it's coming off from last year, Western Conference Finals. They gave him trouble. Yeah. Paul George gave him trouble. Reggie Jackson did his thing. And I think it's going to be similar in this fashion. Uh, I don't think Kawhi is going to be back. I don't know any word on it. You know, I would love, I would love to see Kawhi back. Yeah. You know, Clippers would, would too, but, you know. <laughs> but so, like I said, they got talent, the Clippers. They got chemistry. And they will give the Suns team competition just, uh, just like last year. But like I said, on a lesser degree, because the Suns team is just on a different level. Just it's on a different level. Chris Paul went out. There was no fear. <laughs> there was no problem. There was, there was, it was just calm. It's like, oh, Chris Paul is going to be out for the next five to eight weeks. Oh, he is? Hope oh, he gets better. <laughs> it was, it was, was just, bad. it was just like that. Business yeah. as usual. Best team in the league. Best record in the league. They are my championship favorites. Yeah. Because I don't, there is no way. That the Clippers are beating this team, no way. Suns in five. Yeah, I agree. Suns in five. That was actually my prediction. Suns in five. Um, I understand the experience from last year battling in the conference finals, but um, again, and I know again the Clippers are still out with their main guy, just like how he was last year. But mm-hmm. this 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 whole Suns team is they they took it up another notch. Again, it's like you know people thought last year was a fluke. And they came into the season just smacking everybody who said that. So, like, you know, yeah. I, I Again, the year CP3. I hope and yeah. pray it happens. I really hope and pray it happens. All right. And lastly, the third and the sixth seed, the Golden State Warriors going up against the Denver Nuggets. I feel so bad for Jokic, man. And no disrespect to the Nuggets, but Jokic, no, no, yeah, man, you. I just want to say, Jokic, two thousand points, a thousand rebounds, five hundred assists. The only player in NBA history to do that. Could the reigning MVP could potentially be back to back MVP? 
yeah. it is a likely chance of that happening. Yeah. But man, you need some help. You need some help. Curry's coming back. Draymond's here. Clay just dropped 41 in the final game of the regular season. Jokic, you are needing help. Okay, you don't have a bad team. Aaron Gordon and Will Barton, you know, and Compazzo, they're good. Yeah. But they don't have the chemistry, they don't have the flow, and they don't have the skill set of this Warriors team. So, uh, Jokic, I'm sorry, but that – Yeah. Yeah, those players – next you, year. Yeah, those places you said, they're good, but they ain't no Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. Yes, they, he need – I mean, he needed them all year. If he, if he had them, they wouldn't be the sixth seed. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's held to, it down. Yeah. He's going to will that team on his back in your but yeah, you're playing against Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. That's not happening. I'm sorry. The and Draymond, Golden State Warriors, and Draymond's been back. Yeah. The Golden State War, like you can't, no team with just a lone star could single-handedly just beat the Golden State Warriors in a seven-game series with their stars and their system. It's just impossible. This ain't 95, Hakeem. Yeah, unfortunate for Denver, but I got I got the Warriors in five. Yeah, uh, I I look at I can say this actually I will give them a, I, I'll be nice and I say I got I got the Warriors in six. That's true. That that is that's respectful. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, but hey, all right, that is the first round for the Western Conference. I don't know if we might do the second round. You might just skip over to like who we got going to the championship. Uh, it it could, cause you don't know things could happen. So I think we should just. Hold I know it. that. I think that's that's why I think we should just wait. Like we yeah. did the first round, and then we'll do the second round once the second round happens. Yeah, yeah. But we'll I give know. our pool who would think we're going to the finals and who will win it all. But that is a little bit later on in this podcast. So now let's take our talents east. Let's go to the Eastern Conference, or let's take our talents South Beach. The Miami <laughs> Heat will be going up against, well, for me, the Charlotte Hornets, and for you, the Atlanta Hawks. Wait, no. The Cleveland Cavaliers, right? Yeah, I, I, I had the, I had yeah. the Cavs. Hawks, yeah. For you, the Cavs. For me, the Hornets. The C team made a push. This year, there with the wild Eastern Conference and the, the one, two, four uh spot with their battles with the Celtics, Bucks, and the Sixers battling for that number one seed, and they took it. They had a little bit of drop off because Jimmy Haslam and Spolster, I don't know what the hell is going on, but then they got back on track and to close the, se- the season, they wanted that little five game winning streak, secured that number one spot. They got it all. They got the talent now. They have a much better team compared to last year. Jimmy better not choke in the playoffs and lose to Bryn Forbes again or somebody like that. Uh, and I don't think it's going to happen. And the Hornets, you're just going to be outmatched at this point and outskilled. No competition for me. I got the I got the heat in a sweep. Same here. Same here for the Cavs. I got the heat sweeping the Cavs. And again, uh, even though I don't well, I think we already talked about final prediction many times enough, but but I, again, I had like after what this Heat team has been doing throughout the season, even though they kind of dropped off a little bit towards the end, I still got them going to the finals. I still got them going to the finals over these teams, and again, this Eastern Conference has been crazy, and I still and I but I have them going to the finals. I feel like they have everything that you want a championship team to have. They got the pedigree. Mm-hmm. They have the um, they have. They have the talent, they have the coaching, they have the experience, and they've been here before plenty of times. They've been here before plenty of times. They've been down bad plenty of times. They've been up high plenty of times. This, this, ever since Pat Riley came to this organization, they've just been glowing. Yeah. Doing better than the Orlando Magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I let me tell you something. I have the, I have the heat. I, regardless, I don't care what the matchup is. It could be any of these other teams. I have I have the heat. Except the Nets. <laughs> Except the Nets. But everybody else, yeah, Heat and four. Yeah. yeah, Heat in four. All right, the 
Let's go to the third and the sixth seed. <laughs> you could talk. I'm just going to stay quiet. Uh, the third seed Milwaukee Bucks, the reigning defending NBA champions, looking to defend their crown up against the Chicago Bulls. This is Ja's favorite player, DeRozan. And this is a team that he really likes, and he wants them to go far and do great things. And he was cheering them on the regular season. Go, DeRozan, go. Go, Bulls, go. Injuries got in their way. They dropped, and then they just kept losing in big games and kept losing in big games and kept losing in big games. I don't think they got a single win against a good team or against an elite team. So, man, is this going to be bad in my opinion? <laughs> I'm sorry. The Bucks, the Bucks, the Bucks, the Bucks. I'll give them one game. I got the Bucks in five. Look, all I want DeRozan to do is just average 25. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Average over 25. Please average over 25. If the Rosen a lot comes of- in there and averages 22, I swear I'm gonna cut his ass on this spot. I'm gonna cut your ass too. I know, I know you love him. But what's right. what's the thing right. we always talk about with the Rosen is his playoff struggles. Yes. He yes, cannot yes, do I, it again. No. Yes. I, I give you that. I give you that. He but even with the struggles, he went deep still, but he, but he hasn't performed up to high, high standards in order to get his team to go f- to go to the places that we want to be. So this is his this is his final chance. I did give you our open mission. I said if he does not show up, if he does not show up in terms of statistically and execution wise for his team, I got all right to cut my ass. Zach Levine can't be the best player on this team. This is the. F- First time Zach leads in the playoffs. I really hope he has a good performance. But the Rosen experience, he's a vet. He's been their best player all year. He's been their all-star starter all year. He's been absolutely fantastic for them. Yeah. Even with all the injuries, trying to carry it on the back, unfortunately, slipped down all the way to the sixth spot. Now they're going up against that beast of a man, that freak, and this team who's been playing great. Milwaukee Bucks, yeah. Yeah. Vucevic, hide. Hide. Ask for help. Call the cops. Do whatever you can. Giannis is mowing you down. I am sorry, Vucevic. I know you got that one steal in Orlando in the bubble. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> got that one steal, that's one steal victory in Orlando. I mean, uh, well, yeah, it was in Orlando. But in the bubble, yeah. this, this, is, this is a different cat. Giannis yeah. is just different now. He's on a different... He's on a different type of mode. And that's crazy to say because he's a two-time MVP and a reigning finals MVP. But he's on a different mode. Bucks. 75 is early for a reason. Exactly. And nobody questioned it. Bucks, 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 bucks. I'm sorry, Chicago. I'm sorry to you. (laughs) Man, I know you was hoping for Boston, which I probably would have lost that too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of Boston, let's get into that second seed and seventh seed matchup for the play-in. If our predictions on play on playoffs, if our predictions go right, the Boston Celtics will be battling up against the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> uh, against the team that has no business being the seventh seed, if our play-in predictions are correct. But here we are, the seventh seed, and man, Boston got fought so hard for that second seed. This is bad. <laughs> it's a bad look. Like you fought so hard for the second seed. And well, you I look at, well. Yeah, but well, I give I look I look at I, I look I give them I give them some hope because this is a way totally different. I, I do so. Yeah, I give look this is a way totally different Boston team from last season and a way totally different Brooklyn Nets team from last season. You talk yeah. about a fact with three headed monster who 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 Offensively, nobody could stop no matter what you did. <laughs> now you just got to focus on a two-headed monster, along with the fact that they got some different acquisitions that has helped them 
get better towards the end of the season and push. Again, they shouldn't have been in this spot. And then if things went, went right before, but again, I already said that enough times. But yeah. like, you know, so so like this is more of a better chance of you to win. But so I feel like Boston has a better chance this year against this team than they had last year. Are they gonna win? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Tatum, Tatum, Tatum and Brown is gonna go crazy. I say that. Mm-hmm. But are they gonna win? No, I got I got the Nets winning in in six or seven games. I say that. I I I will give the Celtics some hope, and they have a chance. They are a much better team compared to last year. You know, and really that that kind of second half of the season, give them that spark. Because remember how it was around like January. Like, what yeah. the hell's going on in Boston? But man, they really made that push. Jason Tatum's been on a roll. Mark Smart's been playing great. Jim Brown, all these guys. They really made that push. I will give them a chance. But I do have Brooklyn in seven. Mm. I have Brooklyn in seven. So hey. it's it should be an interesting series. Uh, barring our playing predictions, but all right. Lastly, in the Eastern Conference, um, this might be a little upset series. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers going up against the Toronto Raptors, the fourth and the fifth seed. I'll let you go first. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, look at <laughs> uh, just a little, just a little personal story, right? Uh, one of our friends even said an unpopular opinion, a hot take about this series and let's be honest I, I i heard about it and people were so quick to dismiss it but let's be honest if you look real deep this raptors team they got everything on both ends of the floor especially defensively that could shock a lot of people and i and, and that's what I, I said let's be i said to be honest that that's not a bad take to give at all because with the with the fact that they have a system they have a coach who who has been in the situation which he has experience of going deep and along with the fact that he knows what to do in order to get his team to go and how to follow the, within the flow of the game. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually happens in an upset, but in terms of who I got and beat is on a different level, he has been carrying his team through everything. They got Harden who, even though he has slipped, he's still one of the best players in this generation. And he, and as long as he could just take a back seat and Try to get everyone else involved. Again, Maxi, all those guys. I feel like Philadelphia will beat the Raptors in in, in actually you'd be shocked for probably six or seven games. I'm not shocked at all. I 100 percent agree with you. Everything you just said. The Raptors have a chance to win this series. They have a chance to shock. This will be closer than a lot of what people think. However, Sixers got Embiid. Raptors don't have Mark Gasol. Sixers and six, exactly. Yeah, oh, 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 uh, 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 spicy P got to show up too. He has, he has, ju- he has jumped up mightily, but he has to show up in the playoffs. I, I agree, he has to show up. I'm pretty sure last time he was in the playoffs, which is the bubble, he didn't have that particularly well uh, in the second yeah. round against Boston. It was more OG and Kyle Lowry than Van Vliet, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, yeah, so spicy P, just little spin moves, please. <laughs> Come on, let's have, let's have a better let's have a better series this time around. Come on, exactly. But all right, I did say that we won't do playoff uh, the second round and all that. But how about we do some rapid fire and just not give detailed explanations, since we don't you know now. That's really further into the future, and we're not gonna know who's gonna be playing. Who. Let's do it. All right, so. The second round will have the Suns and the Mavericks. What do you got for that? Suns in, Suns in five or six. I say Suns maybe in, five. It could go to six. I said Suns. I say Suns in five. The Warriors and the Grizzlies. Whew. Ooh, that's a seven game series. Yeah, that's a seven game series. I, I, I'm going to say the Warriors. I'm in agreement with you. I got the Warriors as well in seven. Western Conference Finals, Phoenix Suns and the Golden State Warriors. 
The Suns. The Suns in seven. I agree. Suns in six for me. Uh, Eastern Conference. The no, that's not start there. The Brooklyn Nets up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, this uh, that's also a series in seven. But I want to say the Nets are going to finally take over if things go right in their way. Okay. Seven games. And by this time, Ben Simmons will probably be playing as well. Yeah. You got the Nets in seven. I have the Bucks in seven. In seven? Uh, this is going to be a rival. <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers up against the Miami Heat. No white side. Miami in six. Miami in six. Easter Conference Finals for you, the Brooklyn Nets and the Miami Heat. Miami in seven. For me, Bucks in six. <laughs> oh, so for me, it is a rematch, yes, from the NBA Finals last year. It is once again the Bucks and the Suns. This time around, however, I got the Suns in seven. For you, it is the Phoenix Suns and the Miami Heat. Man, that is going to be some hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But what do you got? I think, okay, this one is tough for me. Real tough. Well, I got the Suns in six. Suns and six. Different routes to get there, but at the end of the day, we both are in agreement. The Phoenix Suns is our prediction to win the NBA championship. Matter of fact, I do think we picked it that last year, but Giannis did vibes. So I mean, <laughs> once we got to the finals, we predicted the Suns. Of course, we both uh I think we had the Nets and the Lakers in the finals and all yeah. that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it was so hard. I still, still remember that. I still remember that game five when that happened. Oh, man, I was, <laughs> I was so when, when Holiday ripped the ball from Booker and then lobbed it up to Giannis. Yep, I, I, my heart just crushed. I was like, yeah, I don't know how the Suns are going to come back from this. I said, yeah. I said, they're going to play hard like always. Like they've been playing that whole playoff um, playoff um, journey. But yeah, I think we both ended the series right there after that. Yeah. So, like, I'm I sorry. think. I'm trying to remember though, but yeah, the Suns. Let's not disappoint once again. But <laughs> listen, that's that's a while from now. You gotta take care of business in this first round, and it should be a very very interesting playoffs. Considering I have the Bucks going to the finals, you have the Bucks losing in the second round. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, well, I can't blame you if they if they face the Nets. I mean, we saw how close it was last year. Yeah, I think we'll be just around the same area of close. Exactly. So I think it can go either way. Hey, I'm excited for this year's playoffs. I can't you know, wait. Yeah, you, you know, the beauty of the, I think the playoffs is, I think we always talk about it, is the fact that how certain teams match up with other teams that could potentially swing the series in a certain way. Because it's just like, it's weird because it's just like, you know, you don't expect it, right? Like you say this, like, you know, and obviously the regular season is, could be like a little bit of preview, but the regular season doesn't determine anything, but in it, but it's crazy how certain teams just match up well with others. Like, for example, we talk about the fact with the Memphis Grizzlies, like we say, if they face the Suns, they could put up a good fight, but yet the Suns is going to win regardless. Right. But if they face the Warriors, they have a better chance of being the Warriors than what they have of being the Suns. If that makes sense, because the matchup fits so well and like the way that those teams play against each other. And again, the regular season gives a preview, but it doesn't tell the full thing. But you could just tell based on a little bit of what the regular season shows and entails, how it could potentially goes because the matchups just fit so well. So it's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy. And like, you know, that that's the that's the beauty of the playoffs. Like, you know, you hope and pray that the 
that certain teams that you know for a fact match up well go against each other because you know how the series could go hand in hand. It could go 50 50 either way. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted Jokic and uh, Joker. I mean, Jokic and Joker. Jokic and Luka in the first mm-hmm. round, but the Jazz had to win. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I can't wait for these playoffs. I think it's going to be really good. I think be prepared for some surprises, for some upsets. And, hey, this is the beauty of the NBA playoffs. Who knows what happens? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. But, all right. Um, I think we should just wrap things up. In terms of the playoffs, since it is approaching, we will be having a video released really, really soon, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Very, very soon to start off. And then videos within the next few weeks of the playoffs happening. So stay tuned for that. Some legendary playoff moments and spectacular moments in the postseason that we'll be talking about. So be on the lookout for all that content coming. Of course. All right. But for now, thank you guys for watching today's podcast. Make sure to tune into our next podcast, which will be either Saturday or Monday. I Depending. Sat- yes. It, uh, or either yes, Sunday I- or Monday. Sorry. Either yeah, Sunday yeah. or Monday. Sunday either Sunday or Monday. or Monday for our special playoff edition of our podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, support the channel, give us feedback, all that good stuff. Also, tune into our social medias, our IG and our TikTok. Yes, in the description down below. And of course, once again, I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this was the Mind of Basketball Podcast. The soon to be playoff edition. Yes. Let's go, sons.